Hello there and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth McCoy, your host for another car review and I'm really super excited to have a 2024 General Motors Chevrolet Blazer EV. This is actually an RS edition. Super stoked to have this. Uh, it's been about a year or so since I was down in Los Angeles for the actual reveal of this um, this vehicle. Uh, GM flew me down and some other press for a day or so to for experience this and I was super stoked then and I'm even more excited to be able to bring it to you on. Of course, thanks General Motor and Chevrolet Canada for allowing me the use of this press vehicle for a few days. Uh, we've had some miserable weather this week and we finally have some sun here for a couple of hours. I have to return the call car tomorrow, so I'm just trying to cram this in while I can, but the wind is gusty, so if you get a little bit of wind, I apologize. This is the only time I have the film and I have to get it in now. So let me go through a lot of the specs, talk about my uh, experiences with the car and the vehicle and give you the lowdown. So sit back and relax. All right, so from a, a design perspective, this is all GM, right? This has all the earmarks of General Motors design language, especially in their new electrified platforms. And the Blazer kicks it up a notch. It's, it's, you know, as you saw from their reveal a year or so ago, and if you've been following this vehicle, it's pretty well kept the design um, throughout the whole conceptual and even initial reveal phases. So really not much has changed, some refinements, but it's a really nice looking vehicle, you know, from the, from the front uh, headlight treatment. It's actually got some welcoming lights. So when you come up, you turn that on, the LED will kind of animate. We're seeing a lot of this now with vehicles, these animation and stuff, which is pretty cool. LED all around, nice body style, big 21 inch wheels. So the RS edition that this is has 21 inch wheels. So it actually looks very muscular. Looks like it's just gonna kind of launch at you. And you know, it's got power to go. There's no problem here in the power and I'll talk about that. But from a design language, I like it. Easy enough to get in and out of, big enough to put some stuff on. You've got some built-in uh, built roof, roof rails so you can put a roof rack system on here and carry some stuff. And again, these are designed to carry people and stuff. That's why you get a mid-size SUV like the Blazer is. Um, so very nicely done, traditional door handles, big wheel arches. This has a two-tone, and then of course you get into LED and some spoiler with the RS trim, sports it up a little bit, but very, very nice. Um, folding mirrors, all kinds of stuff. I'll show you charging and stuff in a minute, but as you can see by the B-roll and some of the pictures and stuff that I'm gonna show throughout this video, it's a very appealing and nice looking car. And I've actually had a couple of people come up and stop me earlier in the week. There was a guy at a traffic light, hey, roll down the window, hey, what is that? Chevrolet, what? Really? That looks really good. So I tell you, you know, um, the EVs, that's one thing about the EV platforms. You've got a lot of latitude in what you can do from a design perspective because of that flat floor, right? So much more you can do inside and outside by dealing with, you don't have to deal with the constraints of an engine bay and a gas tank and all that other stuff. So you can do a lot of different things design wise. And I think they've done a great job. This is a fantastic looking vehicle that is really, really comfortable to drive. And let me talk a little bit more about some of the power and specs. So we look at power and stuff. So if I pop the hood, I already unlatched. As you can see, there is no frunk on this thing. It's just all plastic covered. They have these sectional pieces here that could come off for maintenance, but there's really nothing here. So that is one thing I think that GM kind of missed out on is they could have put a small frunk in here, even though we're seeing the South Koreans do that. And it's maybe, maybe small, but at least you can put a few things in here. So I'm not sure why they chose to do that. Maybe we might see that change in future reiterations. I don't know. But it seems like the North American manufacturers are a little bit different with the exception of Ford. They've been putting them in, in their electrified vehicles. So, but everything's functional. Windshield washer fluid cap here. Uh, that's uh, 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 for the coolant when it needs to be serviced once every five, six, seven years, whatever the frequency is. That's it. So really nothing going on here. Now for power, they come in two trims. You have a rear wheel drive version and an all wheel drive. Now the rear wheel drive um, has 340 horsepower on the single motor with 250, sorry, 340 horsepower and 325 pound feet of torque. That's quite a lot to get that going on a single motor rear wheel drive. This is the RS, it's an all wheel drive trim. Actually has 288 horsepower, so less horsepower and 333 though pound feet of torque. So a little bit more torque. Uh, so it's a really well balanced um, layout and I've been exp I haven't really played around with sport mode or on the others, I just kind of left it in normal because it's really fast the way it is. Even though this is a big vehicle, it's heavy. I'll talk about batteries in a sec. Uh, so it's got a lot of batteries in it. It actually goes really well. So the power specs are quite, uh, quite nice for this vehicle. They've done a good job, I think, in that power weight ratio. Now we're talking about batteries on these vehicles. They come in two sizes of batteries. There's an 85 kilowatt hour 
for the all-wheel drive and 102 kilowatt hours for the rear-wheel drive. I guess they lost some space by putting in that second motor in the back, or sorry, in this case, in the front. So you do have some differences in the range. When we look at the um, rear-wheel drive, it's about 324 miles or 521 kilometers rated range for EPA. Uh, if you add that extra motor, it does drop to 449, so it's actually quite significant. Uh, 449 kilometers or 279 miles, so it's really up to you whether you think you need all-wheel drive. You know, now for charging, this is the charge port on this. Uh, let me just find it. Oh, there it is. There's a little raised uh, section there, and then you push that button. It's similar to what we've seen on the Lyric and some of the other GM products. This door folds out nice and slowly, sometimes a little quicker, but in this case, slowly. So charging's pretty decent. Right now, these cars are coming equipped with CCS. I'll probably see NACS at some point in the future, but up for AC charging, they're 11.5 kilowatt top rated capable, and that's pretty good. So that'll give you plenty of time to get even the biggest battery packs done within a 12 hour window overnight. DC fast charging is up to 190 kilowatts. I have not unfortunately had the opportunity to spend some time to put this through a charging curve. I just simply don't have the time this week. But I can tell you that in regenerative braking, so I've been driving in one pedal the whole week. There's two modes of one pedal, normal and strong. I've been driving in normal because it's a really nice feel and you can really feather that accelerator to give you a smooth start and a smooth stop, especially in the regenerative mode. And if I'm going fairly quickly and I let off the pedal completely, I'm seeing 105 to 108 kilowatts of instant regen before it you know, tapers down. So it does show how much power is going out on the display and it shows how much power is coming in as well from, re from regenerative braking. So right away we're getting over 100 kilowatts just in regenerative braking alone. So I would think that the up to 190 is a very feasible task which should give it a decent charging curve. Uh, GM talks about public fast charging and they, they don't really rate uh, fast charging speeds. Like I just told you they say you'll get about 80 miles in 10 minutes on the rear wheel drive and 68 miles in 10 minutes on the all wheel drive so maybe a little bit slower on the all wheel drive but still again if you're road tripping and you're going from 10 to 80 percent your average stop is going to be probably in the area of 25 to 35 minutes which is very reasonable by today's standards. So from a cargo capacity, this does have a power trunk. If I could find the right button here, I'm always searching which side it's on. Pop that open and I'll show you some B-roll, which will show you how this, uh, the cargo system, it's a pretty decent size. Again, I would say it's average size for this class of SUV. With all the seats up, as you can see behind the rear seat, we have about 25 cubic feet or about 722 liters or so of base space. So it's pretty good, it's about an arm's length in. So you can do some grocery runs and get some stuff in. You fold that second row back fairly flat and you can increase that, more than double it to almost 60 cubic feet, about 16, almost 1700 liters, um, 1690 and change liters of cargo space. So there's a good amount of cargo space to do those Costco runs or throw some luggage, go to the airport, that kind of stuff, and still keep some comfort for the passengers as well if you're gonna use that back seat. So pretty good, they've done pretty good on the cargo. So you know I always like to get in the back seat, so if you look at this uh, vehicle now, it doesn't open all the way 90 degrees, I would say probably closer to about 80 or so, but again, fairly big doors, easy to get into, and because it's an SUV, just climb right in. Grab handles here, super easy. I've got the seat where I have it, and you can see I've got three-fifths of room. There is tons of room here in the back seat. It's very, very cavernous. Very nicely equipped as well. It's pretty straightforward, basic, right? You've got some USBs, you've got a couple of fan outlets here to redirect the air, an armrest, and that's about it. There's no, there's no tablets, there's no uh, anything like that going on here. It's just all that kind of stuff for, to make people comfortable, but there's lots of space, so you can really get a good amount of headroom, shoulder room, and leg room in this vehicle. Now the interior of the GM is very nice of uh, the Blazer EV. As you can see by these pictures, again, it's you have a choice of different materials. Um, there is a heads-up display option as well, which is nice. Um, heated and ventilated front seats, which is a great thing to have. Uh, heated rear outboard seats as well as I showed you earlier. Um, there's a rear camera mirror um, as well from a digital camera perspective. Lots going on in the interior. I think the workmanship and what we see here um, and the stitching and everything is very, very nice. They've done a really good job to kind of upscale this. I mean, the RS trim is a higher package trim, but it's a very nice, I like the cockpit uh, from the driver. Everything's reachable. The screens are very nice to see. Um, a lot of fine detail, throwback on the older style for the vents, as you can see here with some ambient lighting that lights up around them. 
Uh, it's just a really nice pleasing package even at night. It's not overpowering. I like that the display you can you know it's not that strong from a light. You can dim it down and it doesn't overpower you uh, in, in the evenings as well. So everything is laid out really nice and I'm going to go through the infotainment uh, part in a uh, coming up right now in more detail but I just kind of wanted to show you a little bit some of the b-roll that they have um, here on the interior. Overall it's a really really nice interior. All right, let me give you a quick walkthrough on the instrumentation here in the Blazer EV. Um, as you saw when I did the um, when I went to the reveal in uh, California, Los Angeles, uh, about a year ago, maybe just over a year, um, they had it in demo mode, so there's not much you could do uh, about it to play with it. But it's got the same look and feel that GM is going for across their electrified, the new electrified platforms, um, even a little bit of uh, the boltish uh, fonts and styles, but. You know, nice uh, displays here as far as size, easy to see. Um, the driver's binnacle is very well equipped. You can change um, some of the views here. You've got your steering wheel controls for your ADAS, for your adaptive cruise. Uh, the lane key, the lane assist is actually down here, so it's a little bit different, but this is you adjust your speed and your distance uh, for your gaps. Here's some of your music controls as far as station select and for your telephone, if you want to bring up a telephone list and make a call. Steering wheel heaters here as well. And this is a page button, so you've got a bunch of views. Um, I've got the trip information set over here, and that's something you can do from the other side when you go into the uh, trip information. You can send it to this display. Uh, and not have it all showed up on the infotainment. So I've done that. I've uh, got a nice big speedo and battery and everything's nice and easy to see, power, and then of course a radio station I have here. But if I press the page button, then I page through some different menus. Again, different looks and feel where it shuffles things around, give you maybe if you want more power, different uh, visibility settings here. Um, it's using Google for its maps. Again, as I mentioned, I believe when I uh, did the original uh, Lyric um, uh, reveal, and test um, that we were talking about Google a lot. There was a very heavy Google integration and that carries on to all the, the new GM electrified products here. So you have a little bit of a speedo and some power settings down at the bottom. Your range is always displayed, of course, then you have a nice map. It's a really nice feature if you don't want to use the, the big the nav screen map here, similar to what the, the Germans have done in their digital, um, uh, digital cockpit type of things, their DAC clusters digital instrumentation, I'm not, I like that. And then of course you can get uh, for your ADAS systems, get your spacing and that kind of stuff. And then you can go back to a very simplistic, if you just want to see your speedo and not all this other stuff. Um, and uh, you can see that. And of course your range is always there. So I like this particular one, it's nice. You've got your stocks here for your turn signals, your wipers, of course, rear wiper, front wipers. Uh, and then this is your uh, driver's uh, stock to change gears. What you do here is you put your brake, a foot on the brake and you pull and up for reverse or pull up for drive and then pull straight back for neutral if you're going through car wash and then press the button. Everybody's going to these buttons now for parking and puts it in park and then the parking brake is down here. So for some instrumentation, um, nice. Everything is easily marked. You've got your window controls here. Pretty standard stuff here from GM. Now, if we get to the main infotainment screen, <clears throat> that's where we get some niceties. Again, I really like the simplicity of the fonts and the look here. Uh, I like things to be easy to find. I like big, big fonts, big print. This is a nice big display. It's a really nice look. I, I like that there's a physical HVAC buttons as well as soft touch. So you can you can operate it both. Uh, so again, you can press the fan if you want and get the fan. Um, I, I, actually, the fan needs uh, some of the buttons, uh, but there are climate controls that you can do here. You press climate and then you can up the fan speeds here if I want and all that kind of stuff and temperatures. Select where it's coming from and all that good stuff. Sync, uh, heat, AC, all the kind of st standard stuff here. Home button's nice and easy. Home takes you to the main screen. You've got uh, basically a screen and a half of options. I'm not going to go through all the options. I do like some of these quick controls. They're a little off the steering wheel. So if I'm, you know, putting you at my eye height, they're kind of back behind here, but they're basically set and forget type of controls. So this is if I want to turn on one pedal driving or not. And uh, I've set the level for one pedal driving here for on. There's a high, which will be a much more aggressive. Also shows on the home screen, which is nice. It shows on here when I'm driving. And um, so I, I like that. So that's a quick control. Then you have uh, your vehicle off. If you want to turn the vehicle off, you can do that from here. Uh, because it's basically like Tesla. You get in, put your foot on the brake, and the vehicle is on, ready to go. There's no button here to push to start. GM seems to like what Tesla has done. 
and some of the other vendors that are copying a Tesla for that. So you, you have to remember, and then you show, it shows the ready light there that uh, the vehicle's on. So you got to make sure you know that. This is a timer. If you want to leave it on for a while, um, let's say you just want to sit here and park and, and, you know, watch the solar eclipse, which uh, just happened a little while ago today, um, then you can do that. So put it on a timer so it doesn't kind of drain. Um, not sure how to do that, how to turn that off. Uh, I guess there's not a way to do that off. And then you've got your lights here, and your lights are either off or auto uh, or different settings if you want uh, to do that. So that's it's pretty easy. Again, every, you pretty well leave everything on auto, and then that's the way it goes. Um, all right, and continuing on. So uh, I've got audio maps, all this kind of stuff. Again, there is a nice Google integration maps here. Um, let's see if I do if I do a search here for... Let's say Windsor, because I don't know. Uh, let's say, let's do something for sure. I know that's not going to have enough range. Chicago, what am I trying to spell here? Ay, 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 so many buttons, so little time that I can't do that. Let's see here. So if I map in Chicago, Illinois, let's see what it does. <clears throat> so it's going to tell me that multiple chargers are needed. There's some tolls. All right, so it gives you the map of where I am and where I want to go. So let's see if we add charging spots. It's going to come up with the recommended charging location. So it's telling me that I can get to Sarnia to an electrified Canada with 26% of charge. Sit there for 20 minutes. Then it tells me I have to go to this next one outside of Detroit. I'll get there at 27% and so on, as you can see to get to Detroit, Chicago with a 31%. So that's good. I'm, I'm, it's nice to see this integration because I've seen some of this, I believe on the Polestars and the Volvos that use the Google integration. And it's very similar to Tesla where it will select charging stations for you and route you to those charging stations, tell you how long you need to sit there or give you an approximation and tell you how long you're gonna need to charge, what level you'll be at, and so forth. So I like that because it basically gives you uh, all the different things. Now, this particular one is telling me an hour, six minutes. It must be a slow charger, so I'm sure that you can probably find something else in that area and augment the map. But I like that it, it defaults to this. And again, it's very hard for these non-Tesla you know, these non -Tesla providers uh, because they don't have fast charging integration. They have payment and account information that they can uh, connect with and, and you know, let you use multiple DC fast charge providers or multiple charging providers with like plug and charge as a standard and, and just setting up one account and then you just plug the car in and it will bill appropriately. But they have the integration to actually do the mapping and the predictive, uh, predictive analysis more so and uh, the timing is a little bit, bit more finicky. So this is taking best guess and obviously it will change depending on the route. Uh, on how, how your driving conditions are. So not bad, you know, my hat's off that that, um, uh, that GM's even putting this stuff in um, and at least giving people some of those options. Uh, there's Google Assistant, sure Play Store. Uh, there's uh, Google Play Store, all this kind of stuff. So, you know, I'm not gonna, again, go through everything. Lots of vehicle settings here that you can, uh, that you can change. Uh, Wi-Fi hotspots. I believe if you activate the service through OnStar, you can have a Wi-Fi hotspot and all that good stuff. Um, vehicle status, again, giving you some sense of what's going on with the vehicle, tire pressure, um, all that kind of stuff. Uh, I'm sure you can change uh, you can change the formats of the energy info. I've been using this to kind of just monitor the energy of where energy is going from, whether it's through driving or through uh, uh, you know other other aspects, all that kind of stuff. I've just reset the trip, so I'm just going to kind of um, start monitoring it now and see what it pulls. And then, of course, here are your trip numbers where you can reset them um, and play around with them. Let's see what else we have. So cameras are are okay. I mean, this is the RS model, I believe it has all the, the standard cameras that it's going to have. Just wondering if you tap something, there's an overhead, so you get that 360 view. Uh, you can get the side views, which is a split of overhead ends if you're parking next to a curb. So it's a decent camera, so it's pretty clear. Um, uh, it takes a little bit to get used to, like anything, but they're pretty good. Uh, some basic controls you can set up, drive modes. Uh, again, uh, integration with Amazon Alexa as well, if you want that, Spotify, and I'm sure that with continued updates, they'll provide more programming in here. So again, you can do some split screens here, different views if you want to put, uh, again, kind of like tiles of the cards or what you want to see on this side of the, uh, of the uh, 
screen as well as the middle one so you can mix and match and then you get your quick buttons here to your music to your nav um, to your car or your phone stuff and to your charging <clears throat> excuse me your charging elements here you want to set timing preconditioning as well uh, as an option if you can turn turn that on uh, we're getting warmer temperature so it's not really going to do it you can schedule curry, uh, charging of course schedules and then some condition some uh, 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 feedback as, as far as um, the charging and this is pretty cool the headlight charger indicator I'll show you a quick video what that looks like but when you turn it on when you're charging the headlight kind of the headlights blink there's LED that goes across it's kind of kind of like kit ish you know a night rider ish a little bit it's pretty cool uh, just again something to be different and again some again fast buttons for these stuff so a really nice and simple uh, entertainment system nice easy HVAC controls you got dual climates um, these retro kind of interior vents here um, on here a uh, couple of nice cup holders um, here is a, just a really big cubby storage as you can see it goes way down a couple of USB ports right here USB C but really deep a lot of stuff you can put in there Put my solar viewing glasses back and then back here you've got another deep with a usb-c another deep cubby and then this right here with uh, my glasses and everything is your charging mat for your phone if i can get this uh yeah for your phone so you just put it on pop it on and it pretty well picks up and it shows the status of the phone in there as well which is nice so you know it's a nice interior this one does not have the um roof i believe that's another option it's got almost all the options um but again very nice uh, driver centric um displays i like the clear the crispest and, and the color patterns of it really pops and i uh, love the customizable customizability yet you can still keep it simple so good job uh, gm on this and just briefly wanted to show you the backup camera here or some of the camera views um, so it's got a frontal view, a rear view as well. Then it pieces things together with that 360, as you can see. Pretty nice camera systems, pretty clear, good size. Um, I like the clarity. Again, there's haptic feedback if you want so that the seat, the driver's seat will vibrate at various parts to give you indication of right, left, things like that. And then also you can uh, change that to audible sounds, which is kind of the normal nowadays. So that's what, and you'll still get your lines, you still get some sensors, you still get alerts that pop up for rear cross traffic, all that kind of stuff that the car is equipped with. Now here's the rear window. Uh, some people might comment that how small that wiper is. It is a pretty small wiper. However, as you can see, it does the job and you can you still get decent visibility out of that rear window. So I didn't really have any problems with it, but again, it's something that you might want to look at if you see if you're accustomed to it and it'll work for you. And if you really don't like that rear window wiper, uh, you could flip the bottom lever and get into digital camera mode. So this uses the rear camera to project that image into your rear view mirror. So it gives you a little bit wider view as well. Um, again, some people don't like cameras, some don't do, it's a choice, but at least you have the option to be able to engage or disengage that at any time, which is pretty good. All right, so give you some quick driving thoughts, um, spending some time with the Blazer EV. Uh, as, you know, it's been a really, really nice vehicle to drive. I wasn't really sure what to expect. I mean, my, as you know, if you've seen my uh, Cadillac Lyric video that I spent a couple days in Utah with when they flew me down, I was truly amazed by that vehicle. It just rode really nice. It was super comfortable, very quiet. Um, so in, in the build quality, even on an early, early uh, pre-production model there seemed to be quite well. So, you know, they did a really good job. I was thoroughly impressed with, with what they did here um, on that vehicle. So I, you know, the bar's kind of been set now by GM to keep up the quality. And, and I've seen this in this vehicle. This is an early production vehicle. As I mentioned, you know, they were on a stop hold for a little bit because of a software issue. Um, so they stopped selling them for about six weeks or so. They've just recently re uh, released that in the last week and they're starting to sell them. When I picked this one up, there was another one in the dealer showroom already for sale. Uh, in fact, it was sold already. So, you know, these things are starting to sell in the limited quantities that they're coming in on. And I can see why. It's a very, very pleasant vehicle to drive. You know, it's 5,500 pounds, so it's got some weight. You feel that weight yet. It's very nimble in the steering. You know, it's not hard to kind of maneuver around potholes or any of that stuff. It absorbs the bump quite well. 
uh, for again for a heavy big vehicle it's got big 21 inch tires but still a lot of rubber on these tires so you do get a very pleasant ride it's not a truck like ride at all uh, it really is a comfortable managed uh, SUV ride some people have talked about the steering lack of feel and input I don't know I probably couldn't tell the difference anyway to be honest with you folks as long as I turn the wheel and it goes where I want it to turn I'm quite happy and after a couple of turns of the wheel you get a sense of how how you know what the what the settings are like on the steering wheel I put this to comfort I think there's a normal so there are some adjustments you can do into this vehicle as far as a, a driving dynamics go um, in some of the driver settings beyond just eco mode and that kind of stuff um, so it's been a very pleasant uh, vehicle to drive even park you know so it's, it's a it's wider it's a little bigger vehicle so it's taken me a couple of times to park it but it's got a decent backup camera and sensors and stuff all well, it's got very mannered um, driving dynamics I have to say it's very organized very well kept very well put it's fairly quiet once in a while I might appear some little just a smidge of wind noise coming from this area of the driver's door but again we're getting about so probably about 60 to 70 kilometer hour wind gusts here right now so it's you're going on the highway it's no surprise you're going to get a bit of wind noise but as you can hear, I'm not having to talk very loud. It's very quiet in the cabin. The sound system is very nice. And this one pedal, um, as I mentioned, it's been a really, really nice orchestration and deployment of that feature where you can, you can really uh, find a nice place to be able to feather that accelerator to bring you to nice smooth stops. And yet, if you, if you let off, now I'm coming to a, you know, it's, that's full regen at the light mode or at the normal mode. Um, so, you know, which I like a little better than the stronger mode. To be honest with you, I think you can make a nice, more smooth, comfortable ride. You know, in closing on this, folks, um, I'm, you know, I'm really not sure what more to say. It's very comfortable. It's very capable. Very quiet. The, the lights work very nice at night. All this kind of stuff. I think GM, again, has done a fantastic job on their vehicles um, with that Altium-based platform. Something definitely to, to look forward to, especially for future vehicles that they plan on rolling out um, with, with the, the similar platform. All in all, a very good job, GM. All right, so I just want to talk about the real world range that I experienced in my uh, five or six days of driving this vehicle. Here's a screenshot of my total efficiency and trip information. I'm going to break that down for you here uh, in the stats. So uh, when I look at that, my start, I fully charged it after I first got it to 100% and the indicated range was 449 kilometers. I ended, um, fit, drove around for a few days, um, and my ending state of charge was 33%, and it showed 134 kilometers left remaining for range. But I actually drove 263, so if I take 263 from the starting range, it shows me a predicted range of uh, 315, actually, uh, what was predicted, but I actually drove 263, as you can see, so the difference is 52 kilometers on the lower side, which is about a 20% difference. And that makes sense based on the temperatures. We had some cold temperatures that week. It was a quite a, a up and down week weather-wise from four degrees to 17 degrees and everything in between. And the total efficiency is 23 kilowatt hours per 100. I would suspect that range to decrease, uh, to get better in the warmer weather, obviously, and to the efficiency to go down. I think I had it as low as 19 at one point from an efficiency. So not too bad. So I suspect the car will get closer to the EPA ranges with the nicer weather up closer to that 500 kilometers of actual real world range. All right, so I hope you enjoyed all that information about this vehicle from our price point. I think it's priced uh, fairly reasonable in the midsize SUV. This particular one, uh, total price is 67,000. The base MSRP is just over, uh, just under $64,000 Canadian for the RS trim that this is. It has a couple of more options that bump it up a bit um, to that 67 and change range. So they do qualify though for the federal $5,000 rebate here in Canada. So you can get them cheaper. I think it's money well spent. You know, this is a good product. Uh, I've had a really pleasant week in driving this. So overall, do I recommend this vehicle? Absolutely, I do. You know, I, I really was stoked when I saw this in Los Angeles there a year or so ago. Again, GM's going after their install base plus new. Otherwise, it was a very easy get in and drive experience. You know, I do like the fact that you just step on the accelerator, uh, the brake to get in, it turns the car on, put it in gear and go. There's no button to start. 
you shut the door, leave, get out, it shuts off. And even when you walk away, it'll lock the doors from you. So very you know, user-friendly and, and ease of convenience experiences. There's always, there's apps as well and all that kind of stuff. So good job on GM. They've done a good job and uh, definitely encourage you checking this one out. All right, and that's it for this edition of the EV Revolution Show. Thanks very much for tuning in uh, on this quick kind of look at the 2024 a GM General Motors Chevrolet Blazer EV. This is the RS trim again. Thank you very much, GM Canada. Always humbled and thank you for allowing me the use of these press vehicles. Speaking of humbled, I'm very always thankful for my Patreon supporters. If you're not helping me out on Patreon, if you feel like you want to, even a couple of bucks a month helps folks. You can check out the link coming up at the end of the show for Patreon. But I'm very humbled and thank you. You know who you are. Again, everybody stay safe. Keep watching the EV revolution. EV sales are not tanking. They continue to grow. The whole market in general is slowed down because of the economy and all kinds of other reasons. But in uh, general, the EV market is quite healthy and we're going to continue to see new products come out this year. It's an exciting year. So keep watching the show. And until the next time, I will see you when I see you. Take care and bye-bye.